Well, welcome to The Boiling Point. We have been talking about maintenance in the boiler room. And if you haven't checked out the daily maintenance, as well as the weekly maintenance, make sure you check those out before we talk today on The Boiling Point about monthly maintenance. Welcome to The Boiling Point. We have Michael Taylor back with us. We've had Jude Wolf for the last three episodes. We're gonna go back to our maintenance in our boiler room, and this time we're talking about monthly maintenance. We actually did uh, daily maintenance, we did weekly maintenance, and now today we're gonna to be talking about monthly maintenance. Michael, why don't we start first um, with the burner and the diffuser, um, and talk a little bit about what we need to do for the monthly maintenance with that. Yeah, you just need to to visually check it to see that it's not distorted or cracked or burn up. Uh, so typically you would turn the, the burner down to the low fire rate okay. and then look in the back peep sight and with a low fire rate you can see the diffuser okay. and tell if it's distorted or burn up or got cracks in it, you can see that from the back peep sight. Okay, so the, so maybe describe the, crack, the cracks in it, kind of what are you seeing? Well, it, it's a thin, most time a stainless steel plate the diffuser is and uh -huh. if it gets a crack in it then you'll see that in that flame you'll be able to see the crack and you'll also see distortion in the flame itself okay it won't be uniform like it's supposed to be like it typically is why don't you tell everybody that when there is a crack in the diffuser what what actually is happening what's what's wrong with with that most times because the diffuser just has too much heat on it okay which is because the burner is not adjusted properly okay it's probably burning at too low a firing rate to where it doesn't have enough air to push the flame off the diffuser and keep it cool. Okay. And that will burn the diffuser up pretty quickly. And obviously the burner is not as efficient and... Right, it gets cracks in it, it's not mixing properly with the air, so then you're gonna have CO going out the stack, so it's not efficient at all. Okay, dollars going out the stack, we don't like. No. Right. All right, well, why don't we uh, go ahead and move on to the burner's pilot tube, Michael, and talk a little bit about that. Okay, you need to actually pull the pilot tube out of the burner and, and check it to make sure that it hasn't got carbon built up on it and soot or blocked up. So you would, you simply, like on this burner, you pull the, the pilot tube off, take out a couple of screws and pull the whole pilot assembly out. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the electrode, the, the whole pilot, lighting assembly, and you can just visually check it to make sure that it's not, again, not burned up, distorted, hasn't got carbon built up on it, and it's clean. Okay, now this is kind of like um, a spark plug, if you sure. will. Yeah, uh, that's what it's doing, and, it, and it's got a certain gap that is supposed to be set from its grounding surface, and uh, so you can check that to make sure it's set where it's supposed to be. If you haven't been having problems with it, then it's probably okay, but you still need to check, make sure it's not building up carbon stuff mm -hmm. so that you will eventually have problems. Now, if, if, if there is carbon built on it, what mm -hmm. type of problems would we actually see? It would start flame failing. Okay. It was, you start having a pilot failures when it tried to light off, it wouldn't actually light because that carbon is an insulator and it won't let the spark go through it. Okay. Yeah, we definitely want to make sure that the flame is lightened when every it's time. Every time, every yeah, time. Every time, yeah, when, when you need it, you know, when it's gonna fail, it will be at midnight when nobody's around. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And again, money. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next thing. Um, air, Michael, is so important for obviously combustion. Um, so we even move towards the air damper and need to visually check this as well. Right, and what you're checking here is mainly to make sure that the linkages haven't slipped, everything is still tight, and that the damper is not trying to seize up. Okay. So. The best way to check it is actually while the bowler is, is firing and you just watch those dampers to make sure it's running smoothly and not jumping. Okay. When it's jumping, something is hanging up, it's tr trying to lock up on you. If it locks up, then it's going to fail mm -hmm. because the air and fuel ratio is going to get out of whack. Okay. And the air fuel ratio obviously is set, preset. And so right. if that is messing up, then it's calling for the air and it's just... It's just not able to get it's it. It's not mix. getting it. Or it's telling the air to close off while the fuel's closing down, but the air's not doing that. It's, so it's going to blow out. Okay. You have a flame failure. Well, another thing that you may want to do on a monthly basis is to 
walk around, visually inspect the boiler and make sure that there's no hot spots. Um, maybe talk about some of the hot spots, where they would be um, and what you would look for. Yeah, typically on a fire tube boiler like this, the hot spots are gonna be on the doors. This door is insulated on the other side, so if you start losing some of the insulation, mm -hmm. the paint's gonna start burning. Or around the edge of the door, if you lose the gasket material in here, then that's gonna get a hot spot on your metal. It's gonna show up pretty quick on the metal and the paint around mm -hmm. it. And real evident on the back door, in the edges of the back door, because there's a lot more heat back there than what there is up here, so it's gonna show up quicker. Right. But it's, it's, it's really an indication that you've lost a gasket or an insulating material inside. Mm -hmm. And literally the paint is coming off. Oh yes, it'll, I mean the paint will just start flaking off and falling on the floor and you have bare metal there. Okay, and if you don't take care of that and it just continues to happen. Then the metal is gonna burn away and it's gonna actually split and you're gonna have hot gases or flame coming out into the board. Now, now in your 30 plus years that you've been doing this, uh, you ever seen that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, not a good sight. Not a good sight, don't want to be in there. Pull out some marshmallows, <laughs> right. actually grow some marshmallows. <laughs> Well, we've moved to the back of the boiler and we're going to talk a little bit about the stack. What is it that we need to look at um, with the stack? Well, the stack damper is the main part because it's set at a, on most boilers such as this one, it's set at a certain position to get the back pressure on the burner so it works properly. Mm -hmm. And so it's locked here in this position, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a thumb screw, so still, it can vibrate loose or come loose, so you want to make sure that, and it, that it stays in the right position. And you should always have that marked so that you know where it's supposed to be, so that you know when it moves. Okay, so just a simple mark, a uh, little piece of, or little paint or whatever it is, just right. helps Black out. marker, uh, or in this case where it's black already, a white marker, mm -hmm. anything, just so that you have a line there, here's where it's supposed to be. Okay, all right, why don't we move on and go to the, um, interlocks and talk a little bit about the damper um, position. Well, you got two interlocks on your air damper or the air damper motor. A low fire start position interlock and a open damper position interlock, which is your purge position. Okay. The best way for an operator to check those is just to cycle the boiler. He should know by looking at the thing every day where those points are at, mm -hmm. or that the linkages go for purge. And actually a lot of people will actually mark them same way they do the stack damper. They will mark, okay, here's where it stops at when it's purging, here's where it starts at to light off. Mm -hmm. And that's your two points. And you wanna make sure that they stay at those places that that, that low fire interlock, cause that switch can move in that module motor. Mm -hmm. So if it moves, then it'll start trying to light off at a different place and you're going to have problems with failures because you got too much air then for okay. it to light off. Okay. So it won't light. The other problem on the high fire one is that code says it has to purge at high fire mm -hmm. at open damper position. So if that moves, then you're not purging everything out of the boiler like the code calls for. Oh, okay. So there could be a lot more gas in the boiler. Correct, if you've got a gas valve leaking or something, it's not moving it out before it tries to light off. So that's a dangerous situation then, so you wanna make sure that switch is set where it's supposed to be. Yeah, uh, we actually did um, a boiling point with Jude on a little bit of the uh, pressure trolls uh, mm -hmm. that really goes through that. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out. Did a really good job with it. Okay, well, why don't we go next to the oil pressure um, and gas pressure interlocks. Talk a little okay. bit about them, what we would check. Well, the oil pressure, well, either one of them, you can only check it when it's running on that fuel. Okay. So if you can run on oil, then start the boiler up on oil and, and check your low pressure interlock. It's just a, a, a switch and it's set to, here's what it's set as, the minimum oil pressure. Okay. So, you actually just raise that on up to where it's higher than what your oil pressure is and watch it trip off. So it, then it will trip and everything will shut down. Okay. But remember where it was set at so that you can set it back where it's supposed to be. Right, right. Or else you're gonna have nuisance 
problems. Okay. Same thing with the gas. If you have a high gas switch over right before it goes through into the burner, mm -hmm. so it's set, okay, it says this is the maximum I want gas going in, which is typically 10% above where your actual max is. Mm -hmm. So you just adjust that down until it trips the burner off. Okay. Now on the low gas, you don't, even, you don't have to mess with the setting on it. You can just simply start turning your gas off with the gas cock as the boiler's running. And once it drops down a little bit, it's going to trip out on the low gas switch. Okay. So again, uh, monthly thing, you're actually doing that with the gas and the oil, just making right. sure these, these are working correctly. Right. Because you want them to, to work. If this... If the low gas switch isn't working and that pressure starts dropping down, then the boiler is going to blow out is what it will actually do. And a lot of times when they blow out, it's not a pretty sight. The door can actually come off of it because it blows so hard. Mm. In the high gas, if it gets above, really what they're checking is the regulator to make sure the regulator isn't messing up. Mm -hmm. As long as the regulator works, they're never going to be used. But right. if that regulator fails, fails open, then you can put too much gas in. Your high gas switch catches it, shuts it down. Okay. Another. Same thing with the low oil. Mm -hmm. It's really telling you that your strainer stopped up. Okay. If it trips out on it, probably because your strainer stopped up. You haven't cleaned it. I haven't cleaned it out. Right. Okay. Well, good. Great tips. Appreciate you hanging out with us again, Michael. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, appreciate Michael stopping by and talking with us this time on monthly maintenance and we appreciate him and all of his knowledge now michael has been with the company for a long time and this actually was one of the buildings years ago um, i believe back in 1982 is when we moved away from this building and michael worked here when there was 12 people and now we are running around 90 people so i thought i'd just show that to you always appreciate our folks and our history of our people make sure you like us on facebook follow us on twitter if you don't mind, share the videos, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.